Hi, this is Everett, Everett's Watercolors. Welcome to my classroom. Now, uh, today um, I'm broadcasting uh, live from uh, Chesapeake, Virginia, and um, I'm uh, broadcasting out to uh, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And I uh, hope all you followers are checking in and uh, give me some comments and questions. And I'll get right back to you. Uh, Gloria's in the studio with me today. Welcome. And she'll be uh, monitoring the broadcast and uh, checking out the chat room for me. Uh, what I want to do today is show you, this is really exciting that I have today. About two weeks ago, I did a, uh, another plain, I did a plain air uh, show, a painting, called Locks uh, Waterway Reflections. And I'll put the link to that uh, video uh, in the, com in the, in the uh, description below because uh, it's very important. It's the same location. Well, when I was out there, I painted another scene at the same day. And uh, I, I did a, a real plain air sketch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, and I videotaped it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that little short film. Uh, then I'm going to bring you back here. and I'm going to do a studio painting uh, of that scene. So let me, uh, let me start the video now. Okay, I'm going to turn the video on. Now, this is my setup on the waterway. Uh, it's my easel, a French easel with uh, my palette. This is the same location where I did the uh, locks waterway reflection painting. And it's right across the uh, way. I did both paintings on the same day. So uh, this was a plein air sketch. And I start out with uh, what I call a no pencil paint, uh, no pencil painting or drawing. And what that means is uh, I don't draw any pencil lines at all. I just look at the object, look at the scene, and I paint what I see. So here I'm, I'm, uh, I'm painting the color around the white subject. The boat is all white, so I'm painting the colors around it. So I'm painting, I'm negative painting here. I'm painting the colors that are around uh, the white boat. Now that large boat there is actually uh, two boats side by side. So I eliminated that and made sure it was one boat. And that small sailboat there forward, uh, I eliminated that. I eliminated also all the poles and all the extra uh, items there in the painting. I just wanted to capture the shape of the boat uh, with the background colors and the water in the foreground. I was, so I was isolating everything down to that white boat. So here I'm putting in the, uh, the water. Uh, it was a sunny day when I painted this. So when I painted the other painting also, there was a lot of sun out there. And uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's awful bright when uh, against a white background like this white canvas that I'm painting on. And uh, so you have to really look at the colors. And there was no shadow patterns. There was no reflections from this. So I was just painting the, the shape and and putting in the colors as I saw them. So here I'm painting uh, around the boat also. Now I'm using, a round, I'm using a round brush and I'm actually drawing with that. Basically I'm drawing around the boat, but I'm putting in the, the dark trees, the dark green trees in the background. And I'm still negative painting. I'm painting around the shape of the white boat. So uh, this is a little good exercise in negative painting where you're trying to capture the shape by painting uh, subjects or color around the object that you're painting. So here I'm putting in, uh, using a flat brush here, a three quarter inch flat brush, uh, and also working on a little bit of edges there with the flat brush on the there's trees there in the background. So I'm putting in that green, green mixture. It's just, uh, uh, I'm using uh, hooker's green with a little bit of, a little bit of ultramarine blue mixed in. Just to give it a darker, and I'll go even darker. Right now, I'm just I'm just blocking in that color. So the first the first layer is just a block in, putting in the colors behind it, also uh, to capture the shapes back there. I'm just here's the water line that I see uh, behind the boat. The the trees go down to the water line. So I I, I painted the water line in the background trees, uh, the upper part of the boat. And now I'm getting a little bit more of the water just to fill in the uh, white space at the bottom. So I'm not worried about the, the ripples, not worried about the, uh, the, 
any, any changing any of the values here in the water. I'm just painting the color, just filling in the blank. And I'm also working on this canvas, which is a little different than paper. So it's, uh, it's also practicing uh, the brush strokes on the, the, the white canvas. And uh, this little canvas board is eight, eight by 10 inches long, eight, eight by 10 inches dimension. Now here I'm, getting, I'm going with a flat brush again. I picked up a little darker color green with blue. And um, again, I'm negative painting around that shape. And uh, I'm just observing what I see and painting the shape around, leaving everything white that's on the white of the boat. And now I'm adding uh, some more color now, but as the, as the paint dries on the canvas, uh, it gets a little bit lighter than the first layer. So I'm now I'm adding more color, adding a little more blue in with that green. So I'm darkening up. There's a dark trees behind and that's good because I want the dark to, uh, uh, silhouette that white boat. So the, the dark gives me a, a good chance to do that. So I picked the subject white boat against the dark background. So that's, that's exactly why I've, when I looked over and saw this scene, I said, well, I got to paint that too. That's a, that's too much to, to let go by. So I want to do a simple uh, sketch, watercolor sketch today, just to capture the elements, uh, capture the shape of the boat, uh, capture the uh, elements like the trees in the background, the dark tree line, and a little bit of water in the foreground. So those are really the three things I'm really painting. The trees, the boat, and the water. Those are only the three things I'm really concentrating on today. Uh, there, here I'm with the round brush and with the, the blue and green mixture. Uh, that's hooker's green, a little bit with, uh, with uh, ultramarine blue. I'm painting in the edge of the trees. Give a little, a little texture up there on the, the top of the trees. Now I'm darkening up that mix now around that white, that right, the white part of the boat. I'm getting a little bit darker. I'm going in with a flat brush now and, and sharpening up those edges and adding more color behind the white, the white uh, object. And here with a flat brush, I'm getting those sharp edges, uh, which are square, square shapes. And it's a little bit easier with a flat brush. Still adding some more darks there in the background. Picking up some more darks. I'm going to go back in, add some more. The trees also have some shapes back there. So I'm adding uh, dark shadows uh, in the tree line. So here I'm adding a little bit of dark, uh, breaking up that tree mass back there with some darker, darker colors to break up the, the shapes back there. Uh, showing shadows, showing uh, lights and darks of the trees. So I, I've got a, a darker green with using actually royal blue mixed in with green. Uh, the royal blue is a very dark blue, but mixed in with a green gives me a real, real dark, deep blue. So that, that gives me some of those shadow patterns and and, and the definition in the background. Not a lot of detail, but just getting a little bit of texture back there. A little bit of value change. A little bit of interest in the background. So in this sketch, I'm just trying to capture the essence here. I'm just trying to capture the feeling, uh, the, the colors, the shapes. Uh, the values, of course, uh, any 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 shadows I can pick up or any any particular elements I'm trying to uh, pick up. So I'm I'm using my observation here of just picking up the things that I see and adding to it as I go along. Here I'm picking up a little more. I'm shaping out that shape of that silhouette of that white white part of the boat. So silhouette, silhouettes are easier, easier to paint when you know uh, basically what you're looking at and carefully observe. And using a round, now using a round brush to get a little more detail around the close edges, adding some more darks, adding more of that royal blue and on top of that green. So that really darkening up that edges. And I notice here also that the, the dark will really make that white boat really pop out of the particular scene. Now here I'm adding some detail. I'm using, with a round brush, I'm adding a little bit of a shadow uh, at the bottom of the boat into the water. A little bit of shadow along the edge of the boat into the uh, bottom, or right where, the, right where it meets with the water. And here I'm adding, putting more darks back into the uh, background with the, the round brush, picking up some of that dark, 
blue, royal blue, and with a green. And as I observe, I see more. I see more shadows. I see more shapes. So as I see those, uh, I pick up the paint and, uh, and add the add the shapes that I see. And there's also a shadow here on the boat. There's the uh, the hull, which has a a, a dark a dark gray shadow because it's a white boat. So the shadow part will be gray. And uh, yeah, wind's wind was blowing pretty good today. I had a nice breeze coming across the water, uh, hitting right at me. Here I'm trying to put that shadow pattern here on the hull, the hull of the boat, just to give an indication that that will be a little bit darker than the rest of the boat because it's in shadow. Now mixing up a little bit of the ultramarine blue. There's a there's a blue, well dark. I'm making a dark blue. Now I'm doing as much detail now on the boat as I can do. I'm taking a round brush and I'm really painting in the shape of that window on the forward window on that boat. So I'm taking my time, I'm getting the shape of it. I'm actually uh, observing and with the round brush I'm actually painting that that shape in with the with the ultramarine blue color. And there's another window here on the side. Uh, also I want to capture that shape. It'll be a little darker in the final painting, but right now I'm just capturing the shape, just capturing the, the size and uh, the location. The shape, location, and size are very important. So this is all plain air. I'm just uh, painting what I see. Now up on top of this uh, boat structure, there's a there's a plastic covering, which I think is where they, where they have their uh, observation tower, where people can go up there in the, in the, the second level of this boat and observe uh, the ocean or scenery uh, from the boat structure. Uh, this is also a, a fishing boat. They can also fish from this, so maybe a lot of observers. So that's the watercolor sketch, uh, and I just captured enough of it to uh, get me started. So I finished the watercolor sketch in the studio. And there's the final sketch. Hey. Okay, we're back in the studio again. Uh, that was a very interesting little challenge there. Uh, the, the light lighting was very bright that day, and so was the glare on this canvas and so forth. But I had a great time doing this sketch. So what I'm going to do now is take you over to my painting table. Uh, I'll go over a little more details on that sketch uh, that I did on, on location. And then I'll, I'll show you some of my preparation steps uh, for the uh, studio painting today. So let me take you over to my overhead camera. So go into my painting table. Okay. Um, first thing to photograph here. This is the photograph I was using as my reference here for the, the plain air that I did uh, about two weeks ago. And, and you can see a lot of detail. And I really, what I did is I eliminated all the clutter. Took out all the poles. There was a little sailboat here in front with a mask and so forth. So first thing I did was really eliminate a lot of the unnecessary things. I just wanted to paint the boat and just get the, uh, the location and the shape and the size. So the lesson today and a tip for today is to, if you're painting something like this, uh, try to simplify your scene. Don't make it so complicated that you've got all the little details to worry about. Just pick the subject, pick the idea you want to paint, and then simplify it as much as possible. Eliminate all the little extra details. So that's what I did here on this one here. And this is the uh, this is the painting I did in the in the studio, and which you saw on the end of the film. Uh, enough detail here was taken. I did uh, put in the railing and so forth, and also the background. I think what I did, I captured the shape and I captured the the essence of uh, the tree line, the water, and so forth. But you know what happened? I went back. A couple days after that, and I found another picture. I took another picture. The lighting was different. Every time you see a, you go to a scene, especially around water scenes with reflections, uh, the scene's going to change. Here I had a lot more reflections from the tree line, I had reflections from the boat, and so forth. So this became more of a challenge now for me to say, hey, I can paint that even better than what I did before. So. This is where I started. I started with this idea of, of this design with this with this photograph. 
And you can see here, there's a lot more going on there as far as the uh, as far as the painting would be. Reflections from the boat, reflections from the from the tree line, uh, and so forth. So that's what I was really looking for. Also, about here's something else that happened. About 15 minutes later, the the clouds started to come in. And so I got a, a clouds a cloud formation here on the same location, the same time frame. And I was just this is just a photo op. I was just taking photographs here to get a better picture of the scene. And here the clouds showed up. So I really like this. I really like this uh, gray sky and the gray the gray reflection in the water, which I think will make it even more interesting. So with those those two ideas in mind, uh, reflections and also to get a more moody looking sky. Uh, those are the things that really drove me into the final painting. So here's my uh, here's my design sketch. Uh, I'm going to have a dark background here behind the boat. The reflections in the water. I have a little bit up here in the foreground, and I'm going to have a gray gray sky with the gray reflections in the water from the sky. So that's my design. And I'm going to fill, I'm going to put a few of the posts in. And the little sailboat, that's going to be included. All there's little sailboats here. I'm going to put some of the posts in here. Again, just adding back a few extra ingredients to make this to make the scene more interesting and more believable. So I've gone ahead and, and designed this on my paper. Let me go over some of the tools I'm going to be using here. Uh, also, I wanted to point out during the plain air, uh, this is my palette I use. This is the palette I use on in plain air. Uh, it's a it's a it's a metal palette, and uh, has I have two sponges with me, and these are all the colors I have in my regular palette here in the studio. So I carry my studio with me when I go plain air. And also, uh, my brush set I have. I take lots of brushes with me in case I in case I need some extra. I usually probably use one or two brushes here to, to do the painting. I always have something here, so I have my brushes with me in my in my brush kit. This is my this is my outdoor plain air kit. And last but not least, uh, I was painting on the Frederick's watercolor canvas board, and uh, it's really hard, but it's uh, it's it's mounted. The canvas is mounted on a hard board. Uh, this is eight by ten. This is the size I used in the plain air demonstration, as I did outside. Uh, canvas is a little little uh, a challenge to get used to sometimes, but it's really fun. This is a very portable. Uh, it's easy to get a nice quick little sketch. This is what I did on the on the. I had this with me when I did that painting on the waterway uh, reflections, and I had this I had this canvas board with me, and I said, well, I'll put that up and start painting. So this is where I got the I captured that second sketch on the canvas board. Okay. <clears throat> All right, some of the uh, the colors I'm going to be the, the color plan. This is a this is my design plan and my value plan, my darks and lights. Uh, my color plan. I'm going to uh, let me introduce my colors I have here. I'm going to use I'm going to use Payne's gray, and Payne's gray is going to be used in the sky to get that uh, gray cloudy look. This is Payne's gray. Uh, in the background trees, I'm going to be using Hooker's green and royal blue. Give me those two colors there, nice and dark. Uh, lemon yellow, a little bit of yellow in the, some of the some of the uh, foreground trees, foreground bushes. Uh, cerulean blue, I'm going to lose a little bit of that uh, in the scene. And the burnt sienna and yellow ochre, uh, again for the grass and for some other little details. Now these are Holbein watercolors, and uh, I use the Holbein brushes also. And uh, they're all at, these items are all at EversWaterColors.com. that all the way. So my painting plan, you can see I did a little, I did a little plan, I did a little play practicing here with Payne's Gray. This is Payne's Gray up here. And uh, actually I did a, a light wash and then I did another, I did a wet and wet wash on top. So that'll give me that cloud formation I'm looking for, dark and light values of the clouds. Then for my uh, dark green background of the trees, uh, I'm gonna use Hooker's Green and add in some royal blue. That mixture here of the hooker's green and the royal blue will give me a nice dark green. 
uh, for these for the lighter greens and the bushes in the foreground, I'm going to use uh, the yellow lemon and a little bit of uh, Hooker's green here, just to give me a lighter a lighter green mix right here. I'll be using the cerulean blue in one little spot there, just using cerulean blue. That's on one of the sails in a small sailboat. So it's cerulean blue I'll use. And then for some of those posts uh, that are in the water, uh, I'm going to use the burnt sienna mixed in with a royal blue. So I'll get a light a light brown mixed in with royal blue. I can get a dark brown. Nice combination here. And then for some of the grass area up in the foreground, I'm going to use uh, yellow ochre with burnt sienna to give me that mixture here. So that's my color plan. That's my color, uh, color chart that I make out for all my paintings and working on all the mixtures I have here. So going to my palette, I'm going to... Uh, I've designed the, uh, the painting here on the, the quarter sheet of... Gemini watercolor paper, 15 inches long and 11 inches high, and I, I put the drawing here on the on the paper on the drawing board. I put the drawing in there, okay. and I just outlined the main subjects here. In my in my palette, I have Hooker's uh, green. I mean, excuse me. I have uh, let me mark that up here. This is uh, this is Payne's gray. And I'm going to mix up a, a nice batch here. I need a batch for the water and for the sky. So I'm going to start with a nice big puddle. And the value, I'm going to have, uh, I want a light value because I want to get the under, undercoat first and I can add a darker value on top of that. So I add a little bit of lots of water to this mix. And I'm going to use a lot of it. So I'm going to mix up a lot of water. In my test board, go up here and test the test the uh, the color I have. A little bit more water. Okay, that's that's good. Okay, that's the value I want. I want the light value first. The light value. So, uh, what I'm going to use? I'm going to use my use my uh, two hake brushes. I'm going to use the large hake. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the sky. I'll pre-wet the sky with water. Taking off the excess water. Then I'm going to take the uh, small heat brush, which is an inch, inch and a half. And I'm going to load it up with uh, Payne's Gray. I'm going to, this is the lighter, this is going to be the lighter value. I'll put that in first. Go across the top of those trees. Okay, I'm going to blow dry that. Okay, I didn't completely dry that. I left a little bit of moisture in there because I'm going to put a, a, a darker mix in there now. So I, I added a little more Payne's Gray to my puddle here and using a hake brush. Then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to put that darker, that darker color on top. Now I paint this uh, paint this wet on wet, so it'll give me a soft edge, which is what I want. Soft edge. Let me dry that. Now I'm going to take a uh, tissue and wipe off the, the edge of the paper. I don't want that uh, moisture to get on 
and cause any blooms or any blossoms here on the edge. So pick up the excess moisture on the edge of the paper with just a tissue. Okay, now I'm going to do the water. I'm going to turn this upside down. I'm going to paint the water. And the water had the same colors in as the sky. So I'll start out the same way I did the sky. I'm going to pre-wet the water. A little bit of water here. And pick up the excess. I just want the I just want it to be damp enough for the water to for the uh, paint to flow nice and smooth. Okay, now I'm going to take that I'm going to take that lighter color now in the, in the small hake, and I'm going to go ahead and put in put in some. And I'm going to leave some white, a little bit of white areas cut because there was a, there was some little bit of uh, lighting in the sky. So I'm going to leave a little bit of that. Uh, I'm going to change the values a little bit here because the water had a little reflections, and it had it had different uh, values showing. So I'm I'm putting a little more water back in the brush, and. Uh, So now I'm going to go ahead and dry that. Okay, now we'll go back, turn it up again. Okay, so I've got the uh, I painted the sky and I'm painting the water. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the background trees. So here I'm going to use the uh, I'm going to use my my quill brush. It's a silver brush quill brush, and I'm going to mix up Hooker's green and mix it in with uh, a little bit of royal blue. Give me a nice dark green. So I'll start with a hooker's green. Rinse out my brush, pick up the royal blue. A little more green in that mix. So now I've got a nice dark green. So I'm going to go in here now and I'm going to start putting in the, the background trees. So I'm using this uh, quill brush to uh, to apply to apply the paint, cover the area real quickly. Just trying to get a base coat in there started. And I think I'll pick up, uh, I'm going to use the silver brush natural hair black velvet. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, light green in there. So I took a little bit of that yellow and mix it in with the uh, Hooker's Green. The yellow lemon. I'm going to put some little bit of uh, light mixture in here, just a little bit, just a touch. Just to give it a little bit of variety. And while I've got that green on my brush, I'm going to go back here and put some green back here in this area. There's some uh, background trees here which are light green. So I'll put that in while, I'm, while I got the brush loaded. <clears throat> and also, uh, there's some uh, there's some green down here. So I'm going to put a little bit of green down here in the foreground. So while the brush is loaded uh, and ready to paint, you can fill in some of the areas that uh, that need a little attention. So here I'm going to put a little bit of that green here in the foreground. There's, there's some bushes over here 
uh, in the foreground with a little light green in it. So I'll put a little bit there. Now, uh, a good technique I'm going to show you is I load up this uh, round brush and I go up here and I do a side stroke on the trees. And that'll give me uh, the impression the impression of leaves up here on the edge. So the edge, the edge of the trees now are showing up here as a uh, higher and I'm using the side of the brush like a dry brush stroke almost and that gives that gives you the impression of of leaves on those trees load up the brush again a little bit more here so I'm breaking up this uh, tree line a little bit with some of this uh, uh, side brush stroke so this is one of my one of my favorite techniques I've learned that really uh, to me uh, it makes the, the landscape look a lot more realistic you give uh, the tree line a little more rather than a than just a hard line or you give it a little bit a little bit of variation And back here is also some, uh, there, these taller trees are, uh, they've got, got the leaves on them and they, they show up as, uh, they show up as tall trees. And so you give a little bit of definition there on this, on this background. Okay. Okay. Now I'm ready to go in and do some detail on the boat, around the boat. So now I'm going to use my, uh, three quarter inch flat Holbein. And I'm going to load that thing with my blue green mixture, which is a royal blue with Hooker's green. And now I was going to start carving out that shape. So I go up here and I use the, the flat edge, just like I did in the, uh, in the demonstration with the, uh, with the plain air, I'm doing the same. So I learned, how to get around these shapes by practicing. And also I'm adding some more dark, some more dark value here. This is the second layer of green around this boat. So I'm putting another, another layer. So I'm carving out the shape, which I did in my uh, demonstration painting, but I'm also doing it here in, a, in this studio painting the same way. So this uh, this flat brush covers a lot of territory, and it gives me a nice dark background. I'm going to go over here now and get this uh, landscape, which the where the land meets the water. I need to turn my board around a little bit so I can get the right angle. So I'm getting here and I'm, now I'm following my design, my design sketch here. Now I'm carving out the shape of that superstructure here on this, on this boat, which is around the window. Now we're going around the, the bow. Okay. And over here, I'm going to leave, uh, some white, <clears throat> leave some white areas. Uh, I got posts there that are up there, so I'm gonna leave a little bit of white, leave a little bit of white paper there. Just to give a little bit of, let's just give a little bit of variety. And this tree, the trees go way up here in the back, really these taller trees here forward. If there's a, on the side over here, the, the trees grow along here. And there was some, there was some, a uh, little bit of light areas and dark areas here in the tree line. So you can put the variation in there.
Now as we come down here on the side, again, I'm just, just painting around some of these poles here just to give a little bit of, a little bit of interest here. I'm going to paint that pole in separately. So over here, I just got to fill this in a little bit. That's all. Just fill this in right down to the right down to the water line. Okay. Now, before I go any further, I want to go ahead and put some detail on the boat. So I'm going to take my uh, my round brush. which is uh, natural hair and uh, let's see I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that uh, cerulean blue a little bit of a little bit of blue color a little bit of darker blue it's, it's a cobalt blue and I'm going to go in and I'm going to uh, paint in those windows those windows were uh, interesting shapes So I had these dark windows, and I, I can add a little more color to that, but what I'm doing now is just putting a shape in. So I painted the windows, and I can add a little bit of uh, dark color. I picked up a little bit of uh, Payne's Gray. And put that into the blue. I want I want that I darken that color up a bit because the windows were dark. Okay. Then there was a, a little bit of blue around the this said a, a superstructure on this. They had an like a uh, canopy over this, it was made out of plastic. And uh, that's what the observers I guess could see on the second deck here. Of this little boat, they could see what was going on. They could watch the action from this observation tower. But it's like a little little back room on the back of this boat where they could could look out and uh, if they were fishing or just see, sightseeing, they could see outside there. Okay. Now the other thing that was nice, but uh. I'll use the cerulean blue. There was a. Let's see. Yeah. There was a blue sail on this. Uh, on this little sailboat. I'm going to put that in. A blue sail. And the reflection of the water. Get the reflection of the water a little bit there. And uh, what I'll do is take a towel, take a tissue. I want the reflection to be a little bit different value than that one. And I'm putting a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue now on top of it. This, this, these were, this was a darker blue, so uh, I'll put ultramarine blue here around this canopy. A little superstructure up here. Because the sail was definitely a different blue than the uh, the value on the on the boat. Okay, now I'm going to take a little bit of that Payne's Gray, and I'm going to put in that shadow on the uh, on the boat. But I need a real light value, so I'm going to add a little water to this puddle here. And then I'm going to paint, I'm going to paint the shadow under this. side of the boat because this is the part of the hull that comes down and there's a little this little sailboat was right there right alongside and uh, the the little this little sailboat even had a, a little shadow on its side I'll put a little bit there on that one and there were a couple Couple little dark windows here on this little sailboat. Put those in. Okay, now I think the next thing to do is I'm going to work on the reflections. So I've done the background trees, I've done the water, now I'm going to do reflections. So I'm going to take the same color I used for the for the trees. 
mix in a little bit more darker value. And I'm gonna start I'm gonna start painting in the reflections. So along the along the uh, coastline here, along the waterway, uh, along this shoreline, I'm gonna leave a little bit of white paper showing. As I come down, uh, the reflections are over here also. I got uh, reflections off of this little bank over here. Now, as they as they come into the as you see reflections in the water, then you start seeing little little uh, wave not wave patterns, but little 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 rough edges along the reflections. And that's the most interesting part about the uh, painting the water and painting the scene is to get the right the right look. So as you paint these reflections, you come down, but then uh, I'm doing a little side stroke here. And really, I could do a smaller brush. I'll take the uh, this is the half inch uh, Holbein half inch of uh, synthetic. Loaded up with that green, and I could do a little little dry brush here with some edges on it. So the reflections are are not exactly the same as the uh, shape itself. It has the uh, the same contour area, but when it hits the water, the water is going to be moving, and so the the, the shape's going to change a little bit, and that's what I'm trying to uh, indicate here, that the reflection is going to have a little movement to it. And by doing these little lines next to it, uh, I'm painting the reflections as they move. Now over here by this, uh, I got a nice reflection from this large boat. And so that's going to stay white. And then the trees behind it uh, are going to show up. So I'm, I'm making a little marks here that show that there's movement in the water. Also, uh, even the shape of the of the reflection in the water. These taller trees coming come reflecting. So I'm, I'm painting those in here. Also, these are taller. trees over here by this pole hey okay. and then the uh, reflection shows just a little bit of uh, there's just a little touch here from those windows now from this from the boat and I'll, I'll paint those in And then I'll, I'll pick it up with a little bit of just a little bit of tissue because they're not as dark, they're lighter, so much lighter. Now around the boat itself, I'm going to take some of that dark green mix. And I'm going to go right here. It's a nice dark shadow here under the under the boat. Nice dark shadow under in the water. And that will define that'll define that edge very nicely. Okay. Um I'm gonna play around a little bit over here on the this is very simple over here. Just take a little darker green. 
and I'm going to put a little bit of uh, a little bit of burnt sienna in that green. Just make it a little bit browner mix. This is uh, there were dark there were dark leaves and bushes and so forth over here. I'm going to save some of that white or lighter mix I have. So just painting, just painting in some shapes here, uh, just to indicate some bushes and tree, a little bit of bushes and and, and uh, ever, evergreens and so forth. Not evergreens, but uh, just just the uh, leaves and brushes and so forth. Now I'm going to take a little bit of the. Uh, Now I'm putting in the, some of the uh, the grass. The grass is showing these tall grasses and so forth. So I'll paint those in with a little bit of yellow ochre so that they show up here. Uh, showing these are nice. I could use a I could use a rigger brush for this, but I went ahead and used the, the natural hair brush. This area up here, I don't want to forget this. There's a loop these dark trees. I put those they marry in between this side and this side. These are darker, darker trees here in the background. And uh, I think I'll put one more one more little touch here. This uh these trees came down. And there's a little shoreline over here. Just put a little bit of darker area over here under this area. Okay. Now, the last thing I'm going to show is how I put in some of the posts. And I, I probably, you know, this has kind of been uh, real fast, but just to show you some of the techniques I used and some of the colors I moved and some of the brush strokes I used. Okay. But the last thing I want to do is put in some of these posts. Now, what I do here. Is I'm going to use for the for the larger post here. I'm going to use uh, the three quarter inch flat. And I'm going to mix up that mix of uh, of uh, uh, burnt sienna and uh, royal blue. And what I'm going to do is just I'm using the I'm just going to use the edge of the brush, and that gives me a straight line. All I do is go in and put that touch that. And that gives me a straight line. And then I go over and make another mark. I make a straight line. Just using the edge of the brush. Then I fill in the I fill in what in between. Okay? That's one dark area. Then I can take a take another brush, let's say the natural hair, take a little bit of color. And I can just uh, indicate a reflection here in the water, just a little one. And then I'll do the same thing over here. I'll load up the brush with brown, the mixture of uh, burnt sienna. And I'll put these posts right here. There's two of them, one here. Use the edge of the brush. It gives me a nice straight line. Edge of the brush. If I want a little bit wider, I just go in and do another another uh, stroke right next to it. So that's how I paint straight lines. If I have a, a line like this, rather than try to use a small brush or a rigger or something like that to do it, I, I use the edge of the flat brush. Then I'll take a little bit of that... Uh, 
brown and I'll go in here like I did before with the with the natural hair brush and just do a little little stroke here just to give a little reflection in the water. I'm going to take the smaller brush I'll use now to work to even go to a smaller line go off the brush same colors use the uh, royal blue mixed in with the burnt sienna and I'm going to put these there's two more posts I'm going to put in this one right here I'm using, I'm using the edge of the brush a flat brush load up the brush and just use the edge see how sharp that edge is the sharp edge of the brush and just line it up and Press it down and you make a straight line. That's the easiest way to make a straight line for poles or anything that's any structure that has a, a straight side to it, and especially, especially uh, fence posts or telephone poles. Anything like that works, works fine. And then uh, I can take a little more of my brush here. And do a little, just to go down here and just do a little, little light sweep. Do a little reflection in the water. Okay. Well, that, that is my demonstration in the studio of how we do this painting. And what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to show you one that I spent a lot more time on. And they're uh, called more of a finished painting. Now, this, this is what I would call maybe an abstract. I would go in now and, and maybe uh, take some of the lighter green before I leave this. It's like uh, when, you, when you look at your painting and say, oh, what could I do over here? So I can go back in here and put a little more color over here. Knock down some of those whites and put a little more color in, a little more green, a little more greenery. So I could fix that up like that. Uh, you, can go in, you can go in and do all kinds of Add a little more detail here and there. Okay, and you can put more as much detail as you want to in the in the painting. But that to me is I wanted to show you here the steps that I took. I started with the sky and the water, using a gray mixture of the Payne's gray to give me a nice cloudy look, overcast look, and then reflection into the water. The same idea of a cloudy cloudy look in the in the water. Then I started with a background tree with a dark dark green and I wanted to carve that boat out like I did in the in the plain air uh, sketch I did on location and then I went back and put in some more trees then I worked on the then I worked on the reflection reflection is the same color coming down a little bit lighter and then and then there's, there's movement in the water so the edges of the reflection will have a little roughness to it and then the reflection from the boat is reflected in the water and uh, what we can do is you can take, we can take a soft brush. Let's say I'll take a rigger here with just water on it. There's no, no paint at all. And I can go in here now and I can go ahead and just kind of smear up some of the edges. That would, that would give me a definitely a rough texture, not rough texture, but it would give me a more of a, of a hazy look. It would give you more of a hazy look in the reflection. So it's not well defined. Okay. So that is really that is really what I would call a an abstract. Might be an abstract, or might might be an impressionistic uh, might be an impressionistic painting of of that particular scene. But let me show you the one I finished here in the studio. I put a I put a dark mat around it. I put a dark mat around it, and uh, trying to even it out here so it looks good. Okay, now now that is what I call a painting. I really enjoyed this. This is one of my favorite places to go. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Also, what I did after I was finished, I put some. I used the uh, titanium white paint which is opaque 
and then I painted it in with, with the same with the same technique with the brush. I took the titanium away and I put in the mask on the small sailboat. And I put a little some white I put some white areas also on the post. And then I took uh my natural hair brush, my my natural hair uh, silver brush, and I painted in with the white titanium, I painted in the railing, the guardrail on the boat itself. Okay. So that is my painting called Locks Waterway Boats. If you want to see that with a white background, I did, there's the, there's the white, this is a, a white frame or white mat around that with a, with a blue border on top of that. So if you like that, if you want the, the darks to show up, you put a white border around. If you want the light areas like the boat to show up, then you put a, you put a dark area around it. Now that's my favorite right there. The one with the dark. Okay. I'm going to take you back to the, to the main table main camera hi <laughs> well hey i hope you all like that uh, that was uh, uh i'm sorry i forgot to turn on my light again that's one of the things i keep forgetting i keep forgetting to turn the light out <laughs> and there's always something technical to think about uh but that painting i think was it, it didn't happen. I did a lot of planning and a lot of preparation for that. So uh, that second visit I did uh, on site and took some pictures uh, really gave me a lot more information than I had the first time I painted that. The first time I just wanted to capture the shape of the, of the boat and a little bit of the, a little bit of the elements, so the, the trees and the, and the water and reflections and so forth. But when I went out there and saw that uh, potential painting with the sky and the reflections in the water, I said, wow, I can go back and do a big job on that. So that's why I went ahead and did this painting. And uh, it would take too long to demonstrate this on film. So I decided to go ahead and do a, uh, a, quick, uh, a quick painting showing you the steps I took to do the actual process. The same process here. I did the, uh, the sky and the water. And then I would put the background trees in. And then I put the reflection in. I did the foreground bushes here. <clears throat> And I went back in and added, added the, uh, the dark on the uh, posts and reflections. So the steps were the same. It just uh, took a little more time and uh, took a little more detail. So I hope, I, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, give me some comments and uh, give me some of your thoughts about it. And uh, also thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel and give me a like on, uh, on Facebook. And also uh, LinkedIn is also looking in, so they'll give me some thumbs up, I'm sure. Uh, they do. They usually, usually do a job on that. I really appreciate that. How do they find you on Facebook? So on Facebook, they will go to uh, Everest Watercolors Art Group on uh, Facebook. That's one way to find them. Just go to Facebook and type in Everest Watercolors or Everest Watercolors Art Group. And on on YouTube, just go into uh, YouTube and sign into Everest Watercolors. Now I have a link to the old the other video that I did. I'll be in this, the comments below. And also, I have a link to my website, which is everswatercolors.com. And there I have all the videos that will be that'll posted there on my live video uh, section. So, uh, thank you for looking in. And uh, I'll be here next week on Thursday at 2 o'clock. Bye.